Good morning or good evening or good afternoon, depending wherever you're at. This is Pastor Tom welcoming you to another study in the Word. And actually, we're doing our sixth session, and this is going to be on our Court of Heaven prayers. We're going into the courts of heaven, obtaining blessings and prayers of healing and deliverance for you. And we're doing different subjects because we found that in the Word of God, it talks a lot about not only us and our, our sin and our iniquity, uh, that needs to be repented of, but also even our forefathers and even our nations. And so we're doing that all in one shot, and we're taking the subject. And today we're going to take the subject of, of last time we did alcoholism. This time we're going to do uh, drug addiction, which is a terrible blight. And uh, I hate to say this, but there's many believers that are still bound with drug addiction of some type or drug use of some type. And this is a really sad thing. Actually, the book of Revelation calls drug use or drug addiction sorcery. It's connected to uh, witchcraft because witchcraft uses drugs to dual senses, to uh, open the, the mind uh, to uh, uh, outside um, access of evil spirits. During the 1960s, the hippie movement with the with the use of the drug, psychedelic drugs and everything was basically a sorcery. I believe it was really a curse brought uh, by uh, witchcraft into America and, and other places so that Satan could get, gain the access to the minds by uh, opening uh, the, the consciousness of people through a drug uh, experience that is a, it was a, um, well, it's just, it basically was a um, counterfeit of, of spiritual things or God things. Um, I don't know how many people I've met over the years that had those experiences that really believe there's a God out there or there's something out there in another dimension because they've been there through drug experience. Well, that's that's a counterfeit. And um, and then, you know, it went from that uh, with, the, with the pot smoking and that to, you know, harder drugs, and then uh, many people uh, ended up addicted to drugs, terrible things like heroin, and, you know, you have uh, many, many millions of people addicted to opiates, heroin, that type of thing, as well as now crack cocaine and all that, it just, it just got worse and worse, and it gets worse all the time, stronger drugs, this is an issue, this is a problem, and it is even in the church today, and so I'm, I'm going to ask uh, us to take this to God, we need to repent about this, and uh, uh, we need to do it uh, for ourselves. We need to do it for our nation. We need to do it for our ancestors that, that uh, may have participated in this if it runs down through our bloodline so that we can stop accusations of the enemy using this somehow against us in the courts of heaven and holding back uh, our blessings. Yeah, iniquity holds back the blessings. If you're participating in something over and over and over, uh, it gives the enemy access to accuse us. Uh, if you've ever seen 1 Timothy chapter 3, where it talks about the bishops or the leaders ministry, it says uh, through the, the uh, uh, text that a leader must be this, have this in order, have this in order, have this in order. You can't be a leader if you don't. You, it must be, you must be. And then he goes on and says, you know, he goes on and down through the whole thing and says, leader must be proved. A leader must must not be a novice, least Satan get an advantage over him. A leader, you know, see, because those things uh, that he talks about can give the enemy legal right to, atten to uh, attack you. And that's what he's he just says that. Uh, Satan will, you'll fall into the condemnation or the judgment of, of the enemy, the enemy can stand and judge you about that, and uh, this is why we see many of our our leaders fall over the years because they had some form of iniquity, and they never did get rid of it. They never could overcome it. Maybe they didn't understand some of the things we're talking about today. I sense that that's the case. They were trying to fight on the battlefield of life without really dealing with this judiciously, legally, stopping Satan from from, from being able to attack them that way, and then. They could have received their healing and their deliverance and had that never happened to them. But uh, many, many good people are bound by iniquity. And they love the Lord. They love Jesus. They serve in Him with all their heart. But they still have these things, these habitable things. 
could be a lot of things. And those things, need, we need to get rid of these things now. We're entering into time of great glory. And uh, we don't want to end up like Ananias and Sapphira, who uh, ended up in a bad situation there because the glory was so strong. And uh, I, am, I have a sense that they probably had that. That thing was something that probably was working on them since their way, since their ancestors even. There was something about money, all that. And so these things are interesting. But uh, we don't want to open the door uh, to the devil. We want to resist him. We want to, if I can use this term, um, give no place to him, right? And so this is the way we do it. We, we If you have something that you know you're doing is not right, especially on a consistent basis, the word repentance was the first tool that God gave us in the Bible. You know, John the Baptist came on the scene, and the first thing, his message was repent. Because the kingdom of heaven is coming. You need to repent. You need to turn around and get right. Because that way God can have access, legal access to your life. Jesus came. The first thing he said is repent. The kingdom of God is coming. Then he says turn. So that, you know, we'll have, God will have access to come, you know, to come into your life. Interesting. You never thought about that, did you? I didn't. I, I never really thought about it. But recently I have. But, you know. And then when, when uh, uh, Peter got up and he's preaching the first Pentecost sermon, he said, first thing he says to him is repent, right? Turn around and then you'll receive the Holy Spirit and, you know, uh, you know, and, and you can be baptized, receive the Holy Spirit, and you can enter into a whole other life. And today, you know, this word repent is uh, kind of a, kind of a word that people don't use too much. And some of them even teach we don't need to do that as Christians because, our sins have all been dealt with by the blood of Jesus. No reason for us to confess our sins or repent of our sins. That's legalism. That's bondage. And I would say to you, I think the opposite is true. I think uh, people who don't believe we should repent are in serious danger of being judged at this point. Because I think God wants to turn up the power and is in my life, I know. He wants to turn up the power, the anointing, the glory, and visit us. But... He can't, if he did that all at one time because of all these things hanging out there, on a lot of us that need to be dealt with, it would be uh, not, he can't do it. So one of the things about the Azusa Street Revival as an example, it came out of a holiness revival and they were a little rough. They, they, they even went too far with it. But I mean, they believed that you needed, you know, needed to get your life in order and you needed to get the junk out of your life. And they did. They were constantly preaching about it. They were constantly uh, dedicating themselves to the Lord in, in those ways. Now, they went overboard with some things, but I'm just saying. And, but a lot of them, that was an experience they had where God set them free from all these things. And then out of that holiness movement came this great outpouring of the Holy Spirit in Azusa Street. And I think what the, the Lord is trying to do is prepare us for a great outpouring of the Spirit. But until um, with what, what God is talking about now, the type of outpouring he's talking about now, uh, it, it, we're really going to have to get ourselves in a position to where we can handle that and can handle the anointing and the glory and make sure that our lives are consecrated to the Lord, that we have the fear of God so that he can use us and we won't be lifted up with pride or get into some of them, fall into some of the same patterns that our leaders have. Now, I want to share something with you that's personal. Back in 1990s, there was a man who used to come to our church who was a well-known prophet. His name was Chuck Flynn. And Chuck ministered to me and my wife quite a few times. One of the things he shared and he prophesied over us was that we were going to carry the ability to teach about the ways of God, not just demonstrate the acts of God. And what that meant to me was I, I, I feel like I'm kind of a... Uh, um, I use the term, uh, somebody that goes into a business troubleshooter, finds out where the problems are, points to the problems, uh, gets the problems out of people's lives, or makes adjustments, and then they can go on and, and be blessed. And uh, he said, but he said in that prophecy, he said, when he's talking to us, every single healing ministry of the past was ruined because of men. Men got in there. And they begin to um, take take uh, glory away from the Lord. Their lives were not 
uh, in some instances, really dedicated or consecrated. They had issues, uh, hidden issues. And because of that, it, the, the, the revival or that healing and um, thing that happened was stopped every time. And what the Lord was saying is that he wants us to teach you guys so that when God starts pouring out his spirit and we moving forward in this thing, we never have, it never stops. It's not like a revival for three years or six years or seven years or whatever, like they have in the past. He wants this thing to roll all the way to the rapture and uh, wants this, uh, this harvest in. So it's important for us to realize we're in times now where because of the good teaching we've had over the years, we, there's no more excuses for us to act and live some of the ways we have been. So this is an adjustment period. God is giving us, uh, just like he wrote in the, in the Bible to uh, one of the books, or excuse me, one of the churches. He said, you, you know, you, you're letting Je Jezebel do all this stuff. And I gave her space to repent. In other words, I gave her time to repent. Let her know she needs to repent, but she didn't. Well, a lot of people are getting space to repent, and if, we, if we're not going to repent of, of the things that we know are wrong in our lives and the iniquities that are following us around, we're not going to try to make you know, changes and consecrations where they need it, then God will just have to move on and use somebody else. And I don't know about you, but I want to be used. I, I want, if I'm going to be on planet Earth, I want God to use me. I want Him to. I want to be on, I want to be in on this. You know, it's exciting to me. So... I know you feel the same way. Today we're dealing with drug addiction, and we know how big of a problem this is. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the throne of God, uh, mercy. I, I tell you what, God's courts, the mercy of God, we can go into God's courts. We can come boldly before the throne of grace. We obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. And we can deal with the iniquity of drug addiction. So we do that right now. Well, Father, we approach your throne and your courts with praise. That's what you told us to do. And we worship you and we praise you and we give you glory. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, that there's no condemnation to us. You're not going to judge us for eternity. But, Father, this iniquity needs to go. We know it. We know the iniquity of using drugs is, is a terrible thing. We need to judge ourselves and so that we'll be not judged. We need to repent. We need to turn away from this. We need this out of our lives once and for all. So, Father, we do that. We stand before Jesus, our high priest. We stand before the witnesses. We stand, Lord, before all of the, the witnesses of heaven. And we stand before the angels that are here in these court system. And, Father, we ask you to forgive us for our drug addiction. We repent. We turn from it. And, Lord, we are going to not use drugs anymore. We're going to be clean, no matter what it takes, Lord. And we also, Lord, now turn and, Lord God, ask the blood of Jesus Christ to go down through our bloodline all the way to Adam. And anybody involved in this sorcery of drug use or whatever it is, it could even be the occult use of drugs, Lord, we, we repent for them, for their sin, so it will not be used against us in the court of law. But you will counsel that out, and Satan will not be able to access us anymore because of what somebody else did that's causing this in our lives. And so, Father, we ask for you to make a judgment on that. That is in our favor because we know you want us free. And so when you judge us, Lord, you now... Lord God, speak to that devil. You deal with him directly that he cannot harass us anymore. We thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. We believe we've obtained a really good report from you today about this. And Father, we also, Lord, are concerned about our nation or the nations represented here. Father, drug addiction is a horrible thing, and we're asking you, Lord, to forgive our nation for drug use all the people that are using the drugs, the drug dealers, all that stuff relating to drug use. We repent. We ask forgiveness. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ against that. And we ask you, Lord God, because we have done this, that you gain access now to those people by your power and you set them free. Multitudes of them, we ask in Jesus' name. That now you may have a legal right to access their lives 
and the enemy can't use that as something against them anymore. Thank you for healing people today and delivering people today in Jesus' name. Now, we give God praise for that, and I'm now I'm, I'm going to do some spiritual warfare because uh, drug addiction opens you up to demonic forces that, uh, this is strong man, uh, demonic forces that uh, can, uh, again, ac uh, give access to you, your mind, and they have to be dispatched if they're there. So we're going to dispatch them in the name of Jesus. We come against every evil spirit connected to alcoholism, drug addiction, all that. Father, in the name of Jesus, that may be in people right now, and we command that to come out of them in Jesus' name. Out now, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Now, you may go through a deliverance for a while, but you know, right now, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, for freeing us. That strong man is now bound. Whatsoever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever we loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. And we thank you, Lord God, for freedom for from from that attack and freedom in America. We, we bind those evil spirits that are causing people to be bound by drugs. We ask, Lord, you would use our law uh, officials in Jesus' name to go in there and clean this thing out. The borders, Lord, um, you know, whatever's causing this, the root causes of it, a lot of it we know is, is the, the occult world. But Lord, use our president and those around him mightily to uh, take to wipe out this whole terrible thing now father in jesus name we thank you that we believe it's done we also pray father because many effects of uh, drug addiction in our physical bodies our minds uh, spirit soul and body lord it's just a terrible thing and so i'm asking for healing power mercy of god mercy of god and the healing power of god to come into our physical bodies even causing us not to have those that are bound by these things not to have withdrawal symptoms just a, a, a healing testimony of how powerful you really are and lord when that iniquity now is broken it won't be so hard for them to resist the temptations they still must resist the temptations but it'll be easier and we thank you father so much for your mercy and your patience and your grace with us in jesus name we pray be healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, right now. Any damage done in your DNA, any damage done in your physical organs is being healed right now. In Jesus' name. Anything caused by the drug addiction or satanic excess because of that, be healed in Jesus' name. Well, I don't know about you, but I've done preached myself pretty happy here enjoyed my time with you on this you can use these prayers and you know uh, I always encourage you I want to encourage you to listen to the Lord because there may be more that needs to be dealt with that I didn't deal with in your personal life or, or you see something uh, over for America or whatever it is this is not a all all inclusive prayer it's it's a start but the Holy Ghost may show you something now what I don't want you to do is go out and try to drag stuff up but you may be praying or something, and the Lord may show you, you need to deal with that in your, in your bloodline. This happens a lot, and if, if that's the case, do it that way, and, and the Lord will have mercy on it, and you'll have great changes in your life. This is just one great way to pray um, and uh, get involved in praying for America, get involved in praying for your country, and uh, we're believing right now for some major changes in America. And uh, so... Continue to pray. Now, also, uh, we want you to be involved. Some of you may uh, desire to be in ministry. You can go to my uh, Facebook page, FAF Supernatural Training Institute. We have it set up where we're, we're uh, training uh, young preachers and leaders uh, in the things of God. And we're doing it both by word and demonstration. So the gifts of the Spirit are in operation. People see how that works. Um, you know, all that kind of thing. You see the uh, tremendous anointing of God that comes in the room sometimes. You, you'll experience that even if you can't be there. So that's FAF Supernatural Training Institute on Facebook. And uh, you can go to our, please subscribe, go to our playlist here. Go down below or link to our website where you can go and sow seed if, if uh, the Lord is leading you to do that. 
and uh, we really appreciate that. You can send your offerings if you have any to, if you want to do it through the mail, post office box 605, Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. That's FAF, post office box 605, Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin, 54235. And uh, I went a little fast, so that last is 54235, Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin, Faith Alive Fellowship. We really appreciate you guys, and we're praying for you. Please keep us in prayer. Uh, keep your president in prayer. Keep America in prayer. Let's not give up. A lot of people are starting to think this is never going to end all this stuff, but it will. We'll get through it. We'll get through it together because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. God bless you.